Tanya Talaga is an award-winning author and columnist with The Globe and Mail, and she is in Kamloops, British Columbia today. Tanya, uh, good to see you. How are you? Uzu, um, I'm all right. You know, um, this is a hard time for all of us. Um, you know, we are... We are children, we are grandchildren, great grandchildren of survivors. And this has been a difficult time for all of us across the country. And, and you've spent some time um, at the First Nation to come loose to Shrek Mick. How, uh, how is that community doing, uh, coping with this revelation? You know, the community is truly coming together and such a source of strength. I have um, been welcomed to the community and I'm very grateful to be here to be telling the story of what has happened to our children, to the children here, to the children really all across the country. It's been really actually incredible to see everyone come together to mourn, to grieve, to remember, to reflect and to love. There's so much love in this community right now. There's so much, so much pain. Um, there's so much, so many questions, you know, um, questions and, and sadness. Um, the survivors are really truly at this moment dealing with so much. The survivors here and the survivors all across the country. It has been a very difficult time but I have to say that the community here is really leaning on ceremony. And that is something that has been um, beautiful to be a part of and also something very much needed by, by everyone. I know you've, you've written about uh, drum circles that have taken place uh, throughout the community, including people who've come from uh, First Nations right across British Columbia and, and Western Canada. And when you, Tanya, talk about um, the questions that the community has, what needs to happen to provide answers? Well, you know, what needs to happen is, I would say first ask the community. The community leadership has to be the one that directs the way forward here. You know, this is something that has been known in this community, the knowing. The survivors of the school knew that their children were here, that they were buried somewhere. They know that their playmates and their friends and their brothers and sisters never came home and they're somewhere, you know, and so the First Nation took it upon themselves to try and locate their children. And that's what's happened here. And now I believe that support needs to be shown for the nation. Support needs to be shown for the community to help them further their goal, you know, find their children. How do we deal with it now? And What's happened, I think, too, is that this community has become a light for so many others because everyone knows that there are more children at the schools, at the sites. Mm -hmm. This has been one of Canada's secrets, dirty secrets, that we've all known, but Canada has chosen not to deal with time and time again. Tanya, I just think about the books that you've, you've written and the work that you've done on this. And I, I often think about the difference between shock and surprise. Um, and, and perhaps the country widely should be shocked today. But there would be those who would argue we should not be surprised. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission said there were more than 10 times this number of people buried in undocumented graves. And, and uh, former Senator Murray Sinclair has said it might be more in the order of 15,000. What does it say to you that um, that there is surprise today um, that, that had, has brought, I, I hate to say brought into the mainstream, but something along those lines? Mm -hmm. There's been um, a lack of knowledge by the Canadian public. You know, if you're not an Indigenous person, I mean, if you are from an Indigenous family, you are touched somehow by the residential school system you've had a family member, you've had a, a friend, um, somehow you are affected by this. And if you're not directly, you are affected by the intergenerational trauma that this has caused. Canada has a history of looking away, of saying, that's not my problem, that's an Indian problem. Canada has refused to, for so long, refused to face the ownership of what it did as a nation. You know, and this is not ancient history. 
This is something that we are still living with now. And the thing is, is that Senator Marie Sinclair, the commissioners of the TRC, they laid all of this out in the most incredible comprehensive report. There is an entire volume, volume number four, all on the children that are missing, the children that need to be found. And why didn't that get acted on? Mm-hmm. You know, we talk so many, so much about recommendations. We talk so much about the need to do these things. We write these reports, we hold these commissions, and then there is actually no true real action. That is unacceptable. That is unacceptable for all of us. We know the story. Canada knows the story by now. They have heard it. We can marshal resources at a quick second to do so many other things. Surely, surely we can marshal those resources to find our children, to bring them home. I mean, these are children. These are defenseless children who died Mm -hmm. at the schools, sanctioned by the Canadian government and run by the churches, in particular the Catholic Church, who's yet to say sorry, who's yet to say we played a role and it was wrong. That is unforgivable. Tanya Talaga, thank you very much for your time and and we will have of course, uh, look forward to more of your reporting from the community. Thank you. Jimmy Gwitch. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.